Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Let's share some of the uh, real success stories. An, an early example during the Iran hostage crisis, mm -hmm. which would be um, in the early 70s, yeah. uh, we had all of the hostages from the Iranian embassy had been uh, captured by the dissident students, so-called, and we were visited by Jake Stewart, who's a naval captain for the Office of, uh, Na Office of Naval Research. And he said, I've got a picture here in an envelope. Don't open the envelope. And he didn't tell us it was a person, an Iranian hostage. In fact, I had no idea it was an Iranian hostage. He said, can you tell us about this person? Mm -hmm. And I went into a, our little shielded workroom with a psychic of the day, a person we were working with. And I said, I've got a picture here from Jake Stewart. No idea who it is. Could be, it could be Khrushchev, could be the president, could be anybody. He said, tell me, tell me about this per person. And the psychic held it and rubbed his hands over the picture and said, this person is very sick. This is a man uh, who's in a dark place both physically and mentally, he's quite, quite sick. Uh, he seems to be shaking, but, but I see him getting out of that place. That even though he's pretty sick, I see him coming out of this darkness into the light and he's getting on an airplane. So that, that's what I got. The ba basic mm -hmm. idea is we've got a pic picture of a pretty sick person, uh, Who's headed for being on an airplane? Mm -hmm. It's all we, all we, and I gave that to Jake Stewart, yeah. and he gave us no feedback. He said, "Well, I'll, I'll see how you did." Mm -hmm. You often did not get feedback. That's right. Working with the government agencies. So within a week, we learned that it was Ambassador Queen, who was the uh, deputy ambassador, uh, deputy American ambassador to Iran. Richard Queen. Richard Queen, who had developed multiple sclerosis when he was in captivity. After a year in captivity, he got very sick, and the Iranians agreed to release him. They, they didn't want an American to die in, ca in captivity. Mm -hmm. So they released him, and he was flown to Germany for, for medical care. So everything that the psyche had to say was correct mm -hmm. with, with uh, no input at all. Just tell me about the person in the envelope. Yeah. And that, that was a evidence of the kind of things that mediums often do in so-called cold readings. We just say, tell me about uh, this person, and the person will often be deceased. Mm -hmm. But in this case, the psychic was able to give quite a good uh, rendition of the the health and the circumstances of this person. And and f you didn't get feedback, I presume, so you don't know whether that reading was at all instrumental in facilitating the reading. No, I think it was not instrumental. Uh -huh. I, I think that I think that at the time that we were doing the reading, the Americans were working with the Iranians to get Queen out of the mm, cell that he was in. Mm -hmm. That that I don't. I think that that's true. I don't know that that's true. Yeah. Okay. But uh, certainly the description was appropriate for the contemporaneous situation. Mm -hmm. So I mean, when you're dealing in an area like military intelligence, you've got uh, the issue of accuracy or inaccuracy, but you also have the issue of actionability. Whether whether even if it's accurate, the information can be useful. In, in fact, this may have been a a test for us because uh, the 
the fellow was in the was a dynamic situation. He mm -hmm. wasn't somebody who'd been in jail for fifty years. Yeah. It's somebody who was sick, and they hoped to get him out. 